If you ever had a moment in which you just couldn't speak, you just couldn't say the words or you didn't, you couldn't even think. But then a minute later, maybe even a day or a week later, you go, oh, I should have said this. And this would have been a brilliant thing to say at that time, but the time has passed. I know I talk about this a lot on my channel in terms of verbal fluency, but when it comes to thinking on your feet, a verbal fluency is just one component of many components that we're going to go over today. So by the way, I saved the best for last, so stay stay until the end. Don't worry, even if you can't see it, I'll put the details in the description as well and some links to some helpful videos I've already done on this channel. So just directing you in the right places. First is the neurology. Neurology, I'm just talking about the physical sense of your brain. Here are some things you can do to help your neurology. There's a natural way to train your brain and then there is an intentional way. Somebody who perhaps reads a lot or is constantly learning a lot you know all of that really does help your brain if you're good in your mind and problem solving and thinking but you just can't speak it out loud then I would suggest going through my verbal fluency playlist or take one of my verbal fluency workshops down below in the description when it comes to your neurotropic supplements like your omega-3s uh, especially the DHEA in omega-3s if you can do NMNs that's good as well but your overall nutrition all of that goes into the bloodstream then it goes into your brain if there's any type of nutrition that is lacking that is going to affect your brain functioning if you had any type of trauma especially head trauma like you've been in the car accident that's going to affect your brain functioning as well so when it comes to brain fog things like that you really got to check out what's going on in your body overall a lot of times I recommend people to go to a neurochiropractor and getting a lot of blood work done at least the general blood work to check your nutrition and where you're at generally speaking any little thing can really help it psychology okay psychology is one of my favorite things to talk about but in terms of thinking on your feet this is where the whole idea of self-concept your self-image really comes into play I would have yourself ask the question what is the meaning I assign this and so for example if you go to a party and you have social anxiety I would ask myself the question what's the meaning I assign to this that's giving me anxiety it could be things like oh people are gonna hate me I'm not a good speaker I don't know how to connect it could be any number of things but if you went ahead and listed that down you'll see that there's a lot of negative self-belief systems there because in thinking on your feet if you truly believe that you are not a social person or I'm such an introvert whatever meaning you assign to yourself that is preventing you from socializing with ease and confidence you're going to act as if that is true whether it's true or not if you just think about it for a second how is it possible that you know language you know language because you know how to socialize you know how to socialize because you've learned how to do so but you know how to do it so the negative self-belief system of saying oh well I hate socializing um, because I'm not good at it let's say if the, at the core foundational level that's what you truly believe it doesn't make sense it, it just doesn't actually make sense so the more you could break it down in that sense whether it's through a professional let's say a therapist and do some CBT cognitive behavioral therapy although that's a longer route to get there personally I like to do the hypnosis route so that's what I do with some of my clients is do hypnotherapy and just get down to the root of things let's just get to it and let's just take it out of what you're truly believing about yourself because this is again self conscious your self psychology and then basically delete it or clear it out because as soon as you do that now you can decide hey I know how to socialize I'm brilliant at it I'm great now it's just a matter of do I want to socialize right now or do I not want to socialize right now so if you decide to be quiet and just observant it's not because you're anxious about it it's just because you're just choosing to and that's a different type of energy there are some other things you can do to help your psychology physiology ah. if you don't already work out don't already go to the gym or have a personal trainer or any type of physical activity I highly suggest you do it specifically when it comes to thinking on your feet you're increasing blood flow to your brain and you're also training your brain as well as the rest of your body that's when you are under stress and in this case it's muscular stress or cardio stress you're able to push through so you are putting muscle memory into your body that's saying
thing even though I'm under stress or even though stressful uh, things will come to me I will always push through I will always finish and I will always keep going oftentimes because we work in front of our laptops or computers we are sedentary and even though you might have a standing desk I'm proud of you for doing that but it's not enough I used to be a dancer throughout high school and on to college and I always noticed that dancers were overtly confident not just when it comes to dancing but they're just confident in general but then I realized looking back because I was classically trained a lot of it had to do with holding yourself up and so not just good posture but from the ground up and not being afraid to expand yourself because what do dancers do they constantly move they constantly expand they're they're really comfortable in your body and so what fitness does even if you don't become a dancer is that you become more kinesthetically comfortable in your body when you walk into a room and you're not comfortable in your own home your own body and you walk into an uncomfortable space because it's unfamiliar to you it's no wonder you feel anxious you know what I mean because if you feel truly truly comfortable in your own body and this is your home and you're so confident in this body of yours even if you walk into a place that is unfamiliar uncomfortable highly stressful right you're speaking to somebody who is above you or you deem that is on a higher pedestal than you you're so comfortable in your body you're like yes this is my body i feel good nothing can incept you just because you're just so comfortable in this meat body of yours even on a psychological level amy cuddy did a whole study on this of how our body postures up how we expand when we are more confident it's also a quick cool hack in order to increase your serotonin level and when you increase your serotonin level you become more confident i talked about this into how to trick yourself into being more confident i don't think that was the title but i'll put it down below all the more reason to physically work out energetically when i say energetically i'm talking about emotional regulation and your nervous system regulation what happens when you walk into a room you're not comfortable in there's a mental block that says i don't belong here you have this weird imposter syndrome you feel nervous you start to sweat a little bit right you react what's the first thing that you notice the first thing that you notice is that your heart is beating fast all of a sudden you're sweaty there's a lot of these physical symptoms and emotional symptoms nervous system systems symptoms that happens instantly so usually when a client comes to me they'll describe their symptoms that's either emotional or in their nervous system in their kinesthetic body right so my heart starts beating faster my throat closes up my palms get sweaty right just all of these things happens instantly you didn't have to consciously think about oh I'm nervous now I'm going to have all of these symptoms no the symptoms happen automatically so the first thing that I teach people to do is to <sighs> calm their nervous system and go and regulate your emotions how do you do that on a practical level you can do a simple breathing four square technique or a box method technique I'll link that down below but it's basically inhale one two three four hold one two three four exhale one two three four hold one two three four you can do that anytime any place anywhere and nobody will know that you're doing it so breathing techniques doesn't have to be that one it could be any breathing techniques you can do right then and there if it's something that let's say you can step out of or remove yourself from the situation and then do something that is the opposite of the emotion that you don't want to be in so let's say I'm feeling nervous and anxious if I want to all of a sudden feel confident and brilliant maybe I'll put on a Beyonce song and then just start dancing and then and then I'll embody that confidence that brilliance right but whatever works for you for some people it's to work out for some people it's to take a drive with the top down and their convertible and just go right so whatever that is for you here are a few things you can do to increase your energetics comment below which one you would like to work on this week hold each other accountable i will see your comments so let me know and i will see you on the next video Hey, okay, by the way quick insert here we have a new coaching membership program called the charisma crew that is coming up in june late june of 2022 so if you'd like to join the program look in the description down below and i hope to see you on the inside